Hey y'all, the public lands surrounding Moab, Utah are without equal, and I relish each opportunity to get out there and enjoy them. These wide open spaces with their slick rock sand dunes and granite walled canyons are the exact type of terrain I had in mind when building my Suburban. So there is no better place to do a walk around on the truck than out on Flat Iron Mesa overlooking the Colorado River Valley. I got my truck when I was 14 years old, and uh, my dad had bought it new in 85. It was the second new car he had ever bought, and I grew up in this truck, and uh, it is my first car. I built it all through high school, wheeled it in college, and continued to wheel and have a real good time all you know through growing up. And I guess what I'm trying to get around to say is its history is, in some case, mine. I'm going to show you guys what a little bit of that history is. My dad bought a 1985 diesel Suburban. And it came from the factory with a 6.2, no turbo, four-speed overdrive. It was the perfect diesel family hauler. You know, go get groceries, drive to Granny and Grandpops, and, uh, you know, just go uh, all over and uh, enjoy the 55 mile an hour speed limit at the day. This thing would tack 1,600 at 55 miles an hour, and you would get, I remember in high school, I would get like 23 miles per gallon and I decided it needed bigger tires and it needed, you know, more suspension and all this stuff. And it just snowballed from there, as, as you can tell. The only thing left original on this truck is the frame and the body. It's not a special hood. Okay, Chevy hoods are hard to open. It's even worse when it's like a, like a cheap aftermarket hood, because uh, that's what this is. Blame my high school, you know, knowing about stuff and not knowing that you shouldn't do a, an aftermarket hood, always stick with original steel, but that's what it is. Some years ago, I put these louvers in. Now, they don't like, they're not extractors, right? They're just really like pressure release. So you get this hot air that comes over the cooler stack, passes over the radiator, most of it goes down the tunnel and out the back, but you can get a little bit of high pressure under here and you want to be able to release that. It allows the um, cooling system to work better in its factory form. So here's my 6.2. It's slightly modified. Now, aside from the lower compression and balanced crank rods and pistons, this is still a relatively normal 6.2 liter built with a bigger injection pump and a pretty efficient turbo and intercooler combination. They didn't come with power from the factory, but they can take a good bit of power adder. And so I've got a whole set. It's called an HE351CW, drawing air from a dirty but still large big filter, feeding through a modified Duramax intercooler, which I rebuilt this entire cooler stack so that the intercooler wraps around the radiator like they do from the factory and that you've got the engine and tran or I'm sorry, transmission and engine oil coolers in front of that, and then the air conditioner's right in front. So everything should flow nice and easily to this big, what is a Duramax engine fan? And the, for a little while, the Duramax and the 6.5 shared the same threading on a, on a water pump. Uh, so I've got a special fan clutch, engages a little earlier. Uh, that all works well in concert with the intercooler, feeding nice intercooled boost into the gullet. And if you're going to run any boost, an intercooler is a good idea, but especially if you're going to run, let's just say I'm, I'm doing 15 pounds kind of on the regular, and any more than that I need head studs and I haven't gotten to that yet. I also like to do little fabrication pieces on here, so there's a lot of just small detailed parts. You got my uh, coolant overflow, just a basic burp tank, but to get the right volume, I just built one myself. This is 
oil filter and oil uh, bypass system. So it takes oil out of the oil cooler lines and bypasses it a little bit into this uh, head unit. This is one from AMS Oil. They don't make a kit for my truck, so you build it yourself. This is a coolant filter. Keeps all the junk out of your um, out of your radiator and keeps it from settling. Whenever I change that, and I change the coolant filter about every other oil change, so 5,000-ish miles. Whenever I change that, I dump out what's there, and it is just a, it's like panning for gold. There's all kinds of like little materials that are coming out of your block, and it's just continually making that sediment, um, head gasket material scale, all that. And, you know, it's been a long time, and I just kind of put that in recently. So this has 100,000 miles of whatever it was accumulating in the block. Now that's captured in the filter, and I feel pretty good about that particular ad. I wanted to make sure that, you know, you got kind of a general idea that, yes, it's a 6.2, but it's got a whole bunch of stuff on it, like the serpentine setup from a late model 6.5, dual alternators, dual thermostats, high flow cooling. It's got a 6.5 injector pump. It's about 425, 450 pound feet of torque. Burns really clean. That whole set, which is a factory 3540 hybrid, that whole set is the best turbo. saw the rock sliders, you know, they've come in real handy. Trail to SEMA, we tagged the snot out of those. Haven't done much with those here uh, out in Moab. We've not gone through that same kind of trail. It's, um, it's just different type of wheeling out here. It exists, but we're not running Pritchett with this today. I didn't have occasion to use my winch this time, although I did refresh it with a, a worn nightline rope and then their fair lead and hook. Because remember, I had a steel cable, and uh, anyway, that thing just got kind of worn out, and I didn't like clearing an 80-foot radius every time we wanted to winch this thing. So the Maxxis tires have done really well. They're pretty, uh, they've been out here in Moab a couple of times now, and uh, these are 40s, and uh, really happy with these Razor MTs. They've got you got to get the air pressure pretty low, for my truck anyway, like 13 pounds. Remember, my truck's 8,500 pounds. So you got to get the air pressure pretty low to get the most out of them, but they do work really well. Then I'll also say these um, KMC Robbie Gordons, these are it. Nice, thick beadlock ring, and I'm pretty happy with that 3 8 hardware, and even the drain holes, though we's not, we've not really gone through any water or mud or anything. The trick to getting this truck through the trail is improved departure angle, nice big tires, low air, beadlocks help with that, and uh, just big heavy duty stuff, and then being very, very judicious with the throttle. And, and using your gearing pretty effectively. It's got a Magnum transfer case from Off-Road Design. That, combined with the 488s and uh, two and a half to one first gear in a 4L80 gets you, uh, I think this should be like 65 and to one. And you can run around in 205 high and low and then shift into your Magnum. It's a, it's a great way to um, have a multi-speed transfer case. Like any good long-term project, this one is never quite done. And what you see here is just the current iteration of a truck that has continued to evolve and suit my vision for a big and capable square body. Like I said, a good bit of my history is wrapped up in the story of this truck. I mean, this is the project that got me deep into car building and over 20-ish years and 400,000 plus miles, I have learned a ton. But the most significant lesson I've come away with is how this project, which started as a father-son build, has now become my primary vehicle to connect with more folks in our motorsports community. With the notion that cars are connectors of people, this build continues to be a very rewarding one.